Hey guys, it's Choose from the band Sadia Sales, and you're listening to Brutally Ferrara. What's that again? Brutally Delicious oh, Podcast. Man. Okay, and you're listening to Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hey, Chris, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm very, very good. I was looking forward. Yeah, I think we got all mixed up last time. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if that was my fault or how that worked out, but. All good. All good. I schedule, we, we, try, we try and schedule these like once a month on a Tuesday and we do, I don't know, like eight or 10 in in a sequence of a day. So Because my partners usually uh, join me and they're in Finland and in Northern DC. So we kind of do them all in a day and then I have a bunch, you know, to pick from yeah. during the so I kind of screwed that up. But either way, thanks again. Um, you guys are in Never Germany, mind. right? Yeah, yeah. We're based in Germany, in are Cologne, opening, actually. Are you guys opening up over there? Is it starting to get back to normal? Man, I have no clue. <laughs> I don't I don't know, man. It's crazy over here. They they opened everything up, and then they closed it again, and I'm not even following it anymore. I don't know. Whatever. Winner manages to say uh, we're going on tour, then... <laughs> then that's all the info I need, but it's driving me crazy. All these COVID stuff yeah. going on here. Everybody's had enough of it for two years. But luckily yeah. here in the States, we're, I don't know, luckily, not luckily, however you see it, we're opening up a little bit more and lots of people are touring. Yeah. And able to get to shows and you can start doing things a little more than, you know, than you had been, which is nice. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. But it had, it had to be, right? I yeah. mean, we're stuck in the shit for like two years. And um, I, I believe it's time to keep going and, and start touring, touring and stuff. I mean, you have to because musicians like yourself, I mean, it's what you do for a living. So how do you, you know, you take it away for two years, people, you have to get out there no matter what, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, I, I'd say fortunately, but like not really, we all still have our jobs. So right. um, we're working in different um areas and uh you know we right. still have that but like for for like full-time musicians it's definitely i don't know i mean maybe they i believe they took some other jobs completely out right. of the music you have to. yeah you had to yeah and um yeah fortunately we still have some normal jobs so um yeah but we're ready to go <laughs> actually we can't wait what was it this is like <laughs> i think this is your second record correct is that what i read nightfall um, yeah, I would say it's the first real record. The first right. one was like a self-release demo-ish kind of <laughs> release, uh, which you just throw out to be able to play shows and stuff. But uh, um, I would say like Nightfall is the first real record. What was it like trying to write this during this whole nonsense we're talking about? Was it <laughs> a lot? I mean, obviously it was a lot different than the first time you wrote a record, but how did you cope? Actually, I believe we started writing the record in 2019 oh, okay. um, when we were, yeah, when we were still on the road and we were writing stuff like in between um, playing shows and, and I believe we went in studio mid 2020, like something around about like August and mm. um, it was like right before the first real lockdown took place here in Germany. So we were lucky to to go in the studio before everything right. got shut down and went totally crazy over here. And um, so, you know, by the time we wrote Nightfall, I was going through some real heavy mental issue stuff. And um, after that, for, I, I would say fortunately after I had that um, COVID kick, kicked in, because I believe if both would have um uh, would have taken place at the same time. I don't know, man, it would have been too heavy, but um, yeah, fortunately we wrote the, the, the album before COVID kicked in here in Germany. So you said you were dealing with some sort of, you know, some mental stuff. Did that, were you able to channel that into the record and into the writing and make it sort of cathartic? Yeah, hundred percent. I always say that this was like, um, self therapy sessions like writing this record and I'm I, I know I said this in, in a lot of interviews before but it it really is the most 
honestly written personal thing I ever wrote and put out. So um, it was actually a little scary um, because, you know, when by the time we wrote Nightfall, we had no clue that we would sign a worldwide record deal, you know. Um, So we just wrote it for ourselves and and wrote our songs. And then suddenly our managers came up with Napalm and we were like, what the hell is going on? So (laughs) let's do it. And um, yeah, but definitely it it was a good, it was, I mean, it was right. It was also scary because it is so personally, but um, I'm very proud of myself that I was able to open up so much. Do you ever find it? I mean, obviously it's difficult to put yourself out there, but do you ever find it too vulnerable? Do you ever like cross a line? And you're like, ah, shit, I shouldn't have gone there. I put too much out there. Or do you just not care and, and spill your guts? Uh, I was struggling for, <laughs> for a while. Yeah. A hundred percent. Cause, um, you know, as I already said, I wrote it basically for myself and I didn't think about anything at the time I wrote the lyrics for, for nightfall. So I would just sit down and, and write the songs and when I actually realized what that really means, because I mean, it's out there well, wait, and the lyrics are out and um, that was actually scaring the shit out of me. Cause right. I was like, Holy shit. What have I done? Like, this right. is my entire life history and my story. And like, people can actually read it. And um, yeah, but you know what? I am, the songs which helped me the most personally when I was a teenager were the songs which were written like that. Like, honestly, like, mm-hmm. you know, people you really said them. Yeah, 100%. And you know what? It is true. You know, it is what it is. I, I was going through that stuff by the time. And um, yeah, it's a part of my history if I want it or not. And it's it's right. out there. So. <laughs> So putting it out there, and I mean, I know you said you wrote it for yourself and, and you know, and for your own well-being, but obviously we're talking about it connecting with people. How does it feel when, you know, it connects with somebody clear on the other side of the globe across their laptop or somewhere, knowing that emotion and that feeling that you had in the studio is, you know, changing somebody's life on the other end? That's got to be the great big payoff, right? Yeah, I can't. I'm still in shock, actually. It took like a month straight for me to, to write all the messages I got and, and like to, to fully understand and comprehend what that really meant. Because, you know, you, you always say that, like, if that means something for another person, that would mean so much to me. But if you actually get a message and I got a lot of messages from people all across across the globe, I was blown away because I don't know. I can't, I still can't really comprehend it. It's, um, it's insane. And it's, it's like the best, it's honestly the best feeling and the best compliment you can get as a songwriter. I think music and especially heavy music has a way of really connecting more so than, you know, a lot of like pop or, or country or whatever. I think there's, there's something, and maybe it's because it's so emotional. I mean, you, you translate, Mm -hmm. translate, not really translate, but you, shift between like clean vocals to really deep guttural stuff. And it's so smooth and emotional that, I mean, I think you can feel it. And I think the fans realize it too, right? It's honest and organic. Yeah. 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 And you know what? The first time um, I got in, into shouting actually was I listened to, to bear to, uh, to the song, mm-hmm. the lines and Man, he, he's like switching between cleans and, and the shout part, like by the end of the chorus, I believe. And when I heard that for the first time, I was like blown away. Right. I was like, what? this is like insane. You you can put so much more emotion into your vocals when you're actually shouting it out. It has so much more meaning. Um, and that was the point when I realized I need to do that because as you already said. Right. The contrast um, too is good though, right? Because you go from yeah. the the ethereal kind of melodic vocal lines to this, you know, punch in the gut kind of stuff. And it, yeah. you feel it. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And that's what I love about heavy music is that you, you are actually able to switch between these different vocal styles and it does bring a different, um, a different color to everything. Cause you're actually shouting it out. I mean, if you're in an argument with someone and just you say something in a calm kind of way it has a completely different meaning right. if you shout it. So this is 
yeah, it, I got blown away by Beartooth when I listened to them for the first time, and I I knew that I need to <laughs> to put that in my own songs. <laughs> what was it like uh, writing this album? Are you guys writing like the song for the song's sake, or are you writing the song for how it's going to come across, like in the live setting on stage? Um, very, very um, differently. I believe. I mean, there there are songs on the record which I had on my computer for like five years or something like oh, that. Really? I, I wrote, yeah. For example, Deadline was a song that that was on my computer for five years because I always felt like it doesn't really fit with set your sales. I don't know, yeah. it just didn't feel right. But when I listened to the the whole album as as a whole it, with the context and everything, I was like this fits a hundred percent because you know, it's a lot about depression and dealing with that and um, having depression. You're not always in the same mood. There's, you know, you go through a roller coaster of emotions. And then I, I listened to that line on my computer and I was like, this fits a hundred percent. But um, I, you know, sometimes it was like Andre, our guitarist with whom I'm writing the songs, had an idea for, for a song and then he sent me the instrumentals and then I would write the um, lyrics for it. Mm -hmm. um, or I wrote a song completely myself and then we put it on a record or Andre and I sat together and then we wrote, wrote it together. Right. But I mean, I, I would say like Fuck Off was the only song which we really wrote on purpose. I was like, we were we were sitting together and I was like, Man, we need a life song. We need something rock and roll ish straight in your face. Right. Um, a song with which we can involve people in. Um, yeah, but for the most part, we just wrote it out of our hearts. I don't, I sometimes don't even know where <laughs> the melodies came from or something. I don't know. It just happened. <laughs> Okay. I want to shift back to the lyrics again in the and the songs just for a second because you kind of touched on something. Is there something you want your fans or listeners to walk away from after listening to a set your sales record, specifically Nightfall or seeing a show? Um, yeah, I would you know, um I would like people to understand that it is okay to not be okay. I know that there that a lot of people are struggling with depression anxiety and shit like that and i know that a lot of people aren't you know they feel like they're not allowed to talk about it but in fact if you open up um you will understand that there's so much support and love around you um and you know sometimes you just really have to give people a chance to dive into your world because you know i just can't talk speak about myself because yeah. i love to to dig myself into a hole and like, you know, stay in bed for weeks on end and like totally cut myself off. Um, and what I've learned is that sometimes one message can change everything. Like even from other people's perspective, if you're, if you know someone who's struggling with depression, keep staying in contact, keep writing messages, say them that you love them, that you care for them, that you can, that they can talk to you anytime. Um, even if they don't respond, it can mean so much. Um, and I, I just really believe that it's very important to be honest about yourself and, um, you know, to understand that you're never alone. I believe that this is the most, like even the, like the outstanding um, sentence of the entire record is that there's always love around you and you have to sometimes reach out your hand Right. And I yeah. guess, I mean, it's got to be a, a super tough thing when you're in that spot. But knowing that sort of we're all in this together and especially everything's compounded with, you know, the last two years, you kind of just got to look out for your it's like the golden rule, right? Looking out for your neighbor. Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, like COVID really forced even people who haven't experienced something like that um, before, you know, forced them to dive into that. I mean, even if they weren't really dealing with depression, like actually depression, right. but like being in a depressive mood, um, even like just dipping your toes into that makes you feel like, oh, maybe people who are actually suffering from depression just have feel that way, maybe 10 times more intense or right. whatever it is. So um, I believe this is the only positive thing if you can label it like that that which we can take out of this 
whole fucked up situation that at least people have more understanding for each other. Right. So I'm going to disagree with you for a second, if you'll allow me. I think that there's sort of going to be a cultural or artistic revolution coming up, right? A renaissance because everybody has been locked away creating and funneling all this stuff. I think when this is over, you're going to see an explosion <laughs> of like creativity like we've yeah. never seen. Yeah, and I also believe that the shows are going to be sick. I believe that people yes. will freak the fuck out and also the artists will freak the fuck out. Right. The first show is going to be like partying, <laughs> like really sick rock and roll shows. And um, yeah, I believe that this is going to be sick. And, and I believe also I've seen a lot of, of our friends, like a lot of bands um, we know, they all are in studio right now because they had so much stuff to get out of their yeah. heads. And yeah, so there's, there's going to be a lot of great stuff and a lot of like great feelings. And people, and people were locked home. So they've had a chance to really fine tune it and tweak it and get it right. And I think yeah. we're going to be like blown away by, by what comes out yeah. and to your point. I haven't been to a show in forever either. So I'm going to be, you know, just as excited as you are to play. I'm going to be excited to be, you know, with the, you know, my metal brethren and hanging out in the crowd and drinking a beer with the people I haven't seen in, in forever. So yeah. the energy is going to be insane all around. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I believe that. Yeah. It's going to be sick. And I just really can't wait to start touring because we actually haven't toured for two, even, I believe in more than two years. I don't even know. I can't even right. remember the last show we played. <laughs> right. It feels unreal. So um, yeah, we all going to freak out. We all, it's going to be a huge party. Are you nervous about it with the prospect of tours coming up now? Are you nervous about getting back on stage after such a time off? No, not at all. I'm just super excited. This is my, like the stage is my safe place. This is where I feel most comfortable at. Never been scared or nervous. I'm just really excited. And I, I just really can't wait. It really feels like uh, I want it and I can. This right. is like uh, insane. But yeah, I'm just going to freak out. I, I will probably cry on stage just because it will be overwhelming. Right. Happy people. cry, though. Yeah. hundred percent happy cry. Yeah. Sorry. No problem. Are you um? do you have any tour dates that you can mention yet or is that still too early? Um, no, we have a um, support tour coming up. We're supporting NSOK um, this May. And it looks pretty good. So we postponed it for three times, but it finally looks like it will take place in, um, yeah, it's only like two months ago or something. And yeah, really How long of a run? Um, it's going to be like a month straight, I believe, That's something beautiful. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so zero to a hundred in, uh, in, in a day, yeah. right? You'd be right on. Yes. <laughs> yes, man. It's gonna be sick. I, I would be like in in my territory again, and right. it's gonna be um, it's gonna feel awesome. I know it. We all gonna gonna freak out. Oh yeah. <laughs> so what's next for set your sales besides the tour? What do you got coming up? Any more singles or? Um yeah, there will be something this year, and um, we're actually back in the studio. I mean, not like physically, but we're writing and um we have a lot of demos so mm -hmm. we hope we can get back in the studio and really record everything um by the end this, of this year and we just try to play as many shows as possible we have a we have an awesome team behind us awesome crew and we just really try to get booked for as many shows and festivals as possible nice. um Yes. So definitely shows in more music and um, yeah, more time with friends and crew and, and stuff like that. So and the, yeah. And the napalm deal was just the icing on the cake, right? Cause they're, they're great. We do a lot of work with them. That's beautiful. This is, I, I still can't, I still don't understand why they, they <laughs> took us, but um, these people are insane. Like seriously, I, I really mean that because I'm a person, I like picking the people I work with right. um, wisely because it's my baby, you know, it's my music. So sure. people have to be as dedicated to it as I am. And so, um, yeah. And these people are, I mean, I'm in contact on a daily basis with these guys and they are working 24 seven to get, to push us. And, right. and yeah, it's just, these people are awesome. I'm really happy with, with, with their label. Awesome. So before we go, can I get you to drop your socials and uh, all your info where people can find you online? Yeah, sure. Should I do it? Yeah. 
Yeah, you can uh, hit us up on uh, Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, and we haven't figured out TikTok yet because I don't know. I haven't probably figured it out either. It. <laughs> I, I don't know how we're to use it. We're probably too old for it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, so it's it's always going to be Sadio Sales Band, um, and it would be awesome if you could give us a follow. We try to post as much stuff as we can and try to keep everyone posted and try to be as transparent as we can be. And there will be some awesome news very soon. Awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time. Sorry we got uh, delayed, but I'm glad we finally got to make it up. Never mind. This was an awesome uh, interview. So thank you so much for your yep. time, Bruce. Hope that wasn't too bad. I know we kind of meandered a little, but I'd just like to talk. It was awesome. Okay, great. It was awesome. I think it's going to turn out great. So hey, thank you, safe. man. Take care, my friend. You too. All right, bye. Take care. Bye. bye. Hello out there. Yes, hello out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Them But the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you!